Yo, what's good, fam? It's your man, Jay. I'm back with another episode of Evolutionary Comics, another segment of What's in My Bag. It's New Comic Book Wednesday, July 7th, 2021. Let's get it. Alright fam, so I'm back with another episode of Evolutionary Comics, my segment of what's in my bag. I got a nice little stack as always. I also got some back issue pickups and uh, some key issues in my opinion, a key issue that I have been searching for. I finally found it, so I'm going to share that with you guys today. Alright, so first up I have Skybound X and this is uh, Image Comics imprint and this is written by Robert Kirkman the creator of The Walking Dead. So I guess to go along with uh, continuing that story, um, they're going to be doing some anthology type stories that are based on some of the characters from The Walking Dead. And I don't know if they're going to expand out into anything else, but this book has about four different stories. The first one is Beyond The Walking Dead, Rick Grimes, 2000. So this looks pretty interesting. I wasn't going to pick this one up because, you know, I... Love The Walking Dead as a show. I didn't get into reading uh, the actual comic book until late and the prices on them were crazy so I didn't want to like chase all of them down. The show was good enough for me but this is something new. I, so I picked it up and like I said I wasn't going to actually um, get into it but I opened up the book and I saw one of my favorite characters um, getting killed. So I'm like okay that can't be true that has to be a dream. I hope this person is not getting whacked already first time I opened the book but it made me kind of curious so that's why I picked up that one alright so next up we have Geiger number four from Image Comics it's written by Jeff Johns and the artwork is by Gary Frank this story has begun to be kind of intriguing it's post-apocalyptic uh, radioactivity going on in the world uh, and there's this guy the what they call the radioactive man the glowing man um, he's actually out on the outbound trying to be left alone and um, all these people that are, you know, don't have anything better to do but to mess with people go out and they're trying to, you know, mess with him and trying to, you know, destroy whatever he has going on and, you know, take his powers or so to speak. He has come across these two little girls that uh, that he's trying to help save and that's where this is going. So I, I forget what these people are called that are attacking him, but if you pick up this issue number four, you can find out before me. All right, so moving on to DC, and it's funny because, so when I started out collecting comics, I was a big Marvel collector. Marvel Comics was my thing. I wanted to be the next Stan Lee. My homeboy, Dale Washington, I wanted him, you know, to come in and do the artwork, and I do the writing, and, you know, we jump into the game that way. And this is like when we were about, like, seventh grade, we had these aspirations. So I'm a big Marvel fan. But lately, I find myself picking up a lot of DC comics, DC is trying to make a little bit of a move. They're still not on par with some of the other imprints, but as you will see within my stack, um, you know they're they're making a little bit of an impact. So you got to give them a chance. But first up, we're gonna go with uh, the Nice House on the Lake, issue two, and this is written by James Tynion, and artwork is by Alvaro Martinez Bueno. And uh, the first issue was okay, you know, it was kind of like a setup issue. A lot of uh, comic book bloggers were like, you know, raving about it and thinking that it was going to be something great. I, I don't see the greatness in it just yet, but this is issue two. Check out my two in review, you know, because this is something that's going to be in there to see if I proceed with keeping this in my pull list. We'll see where the story goes. Next up from DC Comics, I have Batman 110. And this is also written by James Tinian, the fourth. Um, I think he dropped off the fourth. Usually they have James Tiny in the fourth or whatever, but I don't know what happened with that. So, so this is one of those series that comes out every week, and it's fairly easy to get behind it on your reading if you have a lot of stuff in your pull list like I do. Next up we have from DC Comics, and this is the next Batman. And this is issue four. This is the last run of uh, the last one in the run, the next Batman Second Son. Um, but 
Don't fret if you enjoyed this one. There is going to be an ongoing series with the next Batman uh, feature. This one is written by John Ridley. Um, he is the author that is going to be moving on to do the, the Black Panther series, the new Black Panther series that's coming out. I'm really looking forward to that. We'll see what happens with it. And we're going to see what happens with the conclusion of uh, the next Batman. So check that out. Next up is Justice League number 64. And this is kind of a key issue. Um, this is written by Brian Michael Bendis. He's known for creating some of the dopest characters in the DC unit or in comics period. Um, Brian Michael Bendis created Miles Morales, uh, Riri Williams, um, Naomi. So he, he's one of those guys that, uh, you know, he's on par as far as character creation. He's coming up, not as, not as in-depth as Stan Lee, but, you know, he's in that lane. He's doing some great work. So I'm a big fan of his. Um, but this one, he's introducing this new group of individuals called the United. So that was that's what makes this somewhat of a key issue. And at the bottom, you'll see Naomi right there. That's my girl Naomi. That's the reason why I started reading the Justice League. Next up, we have Green Lantern number four. And you see Green Lantern Joe Mullen and uh, Team Lantern on the bottom. And this is written by Jeffrey Thorne as well. And uh, I got to catch up with this one too. I read number one. I really liked it. I saw where it was going. I really liked the character of Teen Lantern. Always liked, you know, Green Lantern, Joe Mullen. And um, I'm going to see what's going on with this. I have uh, two and three on deck to read sometime soon. But um, yeah, that's number four. I like this cover too. This is a pretty dope cover. This is a nice cover with that red in the background. All right, so next up from DC Comics is Batman Secret Files, The Signal. This is the return of my man, Duke Thomas. And uh, this is written by Tony Patrick, and the artwork is done by Christian Deuce. Um, Tony Patrick, I think he's fairly new to writing comic books, but um, he is an accomplished writer. He did some stuff with uh, for NBC and some other things. He does have like his own comic book out. I believe that it was produced by Black Mask. Um, I think it's called X or something like that. You had to look it up. I can't remember right off off the top of the head, but uh, you know, um, I'm I'm happy to see Duke Thomas. The one thing I hate with uh, with the signals is they always have to attach Batman's name to it. Um, I understand that he's like, you know, up under Batman, like he's a one. He was one of the original Robins. Um, if you read that story, the storyline with the Robins, but this is um, Duke Thomas. He is the day protector of Gotham. So while Batman is out protecting the night, the signal protects during the day. So um, he is an underling of uh, Batman. He is like one of the protégés. I don't know if underling is the right word to use, but he is a protégé of Batman. Um, I just don't like seeing Batman's name all across you know, his books. Every book that the signal comes out, they always have to do that. So. Let him be a standalone character because I do see greatness within the young fella. So check that out. That is the signal. Uh, number one, you know, Duke Thomas is back. All right, moving along to my Marvel stack. And again, like I said, my Marvel stack is not even close to what my DC stack was. If you notice in my DC stack, there's a lot of black writers and uh, content creators. So you got Tony Patrick with the signal. You got Jeffrey Thorne with uh, Green Lantern. Um, you also have John Ridley with the next Batman Second Son. And yeah, so those are those are all black writers within DC. So, you know, that's why I've, I've been picking up more DC. Not that uh, that I'm always like, you know, I only want to read black writers, but it's, it's the thing of inclusion. I think, you know, it's a time where there's a lot of creators that are making black characters. And it's good to see, you know, black writers and black content creators that are jumping in on that. So anyway, that's my spiel. On to my Marvel Comics stack. And this is Extreme Carnage number one. And this was a, this was put in my box. Um, I guess they wanted me to check it out. So, you know, I'm going to check it out. I'm not, I haven't been a big Carnage fan, but with the movie coming up, this may be something, you know, just to grab onto and hold it just in case you know so not gonna say too much about that one all right so next i have the amazing spider-man number seven 
This is the prelude to the Sinister War. If you just read the Chameleon series, if you're into, you know, the Amazing Spider-Man, they kept putting like little shorts um, as Doc Ock is going around and he's collecting all the members of the Sinister Six. So this is what they're about to come on in. And the Sinister Six, their mind is constantly, constantly on Peter Parker Spider-Man. So I don't know, you know, Petey is in some trouble. As you see on the cover, he's webbed up in his own web, I guess. But this is going to be a good series. And I do think that um, with this book, they are kind of setting up for the next movie to come out. So if you're a key collector, if you're looking for speculation, if you're on it now, you may be a little too late. But try to collect the first appearances of all the members of the Sinister Six. So if you know, you're trying to spec and you're trying to grab a lot of those uh, first appearances of any of the Sinister Six, um, I know I'm way behind on it and a lot of those particular uh, issues are kind of out of my price range um, as far as on my list of priority of what I want to grab. So I've been relegated to just kind of grabbing the Sinister Six pop. So I get all of those and at least I have something related to it, but who knows. All right, so next up uh, we have the Avengers number 46 and um, they kind of left us hanging for a little bit with this. Um, I'm not sure what's going on, but I know it was transitioning where Blade almost had like a spinoff story where he was going and he was about to be the sheriff in Transylvania or something dealing with uh, with Dracula. So that that's kind of crazy for him to be um, kind of like the warden of a bunch of vampires where he's going to be trying to kill them and they definitely trying to kill him. So that's going to be an interesting story. But um, right now, the Avengers are up against She-Hulk. So this is about to be World War She-Hulk. So we're going to see what that goes. It's kind of a spin-off of that World War Hulk thing where uh, the Avengers were trying to deal with the Incredible Hulk when actually they did him wrong originally. So we're going to see what happens in this story. I'm really anxious to get into this one to see exactly why they messing with Jen like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, Jen has always been, you know, a dope, dope chick. She's a very, she's a very likable character and looks like they just pissed off She-Hulk so we're gonna see what happens with that next up I have from Marvel Comics I have a new run for X-Men so this is X-Men number one and I was lucky enough to grab this Scotty Young cover I love this a variant cover I love Scotty Young's work um, I'm a big fan of his work I didn't really know about it at first when I started collecting um, I really didn't come across you know identifying his work uh, even though it's easily identifiable, I didn't really put, you know, two and two together and really think about the artwork on it, but until like maybe six months ago. So I've been going crazy collecting a bunch of Scotty Young covers. This falls in line with it. It's a new storyline for X-Men. Jump on. If you're an X-Men fan and you haven't been collecting or you want to jump onto something new, this is going to be a great jumping on point. Find out what's going on with the X-Men. Next up from Boom Comics, I have Basilisk, number two. And this is written by Cullen Bunn, and the artwork is by Jonah Scharf. And I am definitely, this is something I've definitely been waiting, to, waiting to, and this is definitely something I've been waiting for. I am anxious to see what goes on next in it. Basilisk, number one, I loved it. I love the setup. I love, you know, how they were leading into it. They haven't told any backstories or anything yet, so it's a great pickup. And, um, you know, we're, gonna, we're about to see what happens next. They left off with like a, a little bit of a cliffhanger, which I normally hate cliffhangers because they make you wait. But this is one that's probably going to be worth the wait. So this is Basilisk number, one, uh, number two. Basilisk number two. And I did pick up the 1 in 25 Albuquerque uh, variant. This is the only variant that uh, my shop had. And so if you take uh, Wolverine... Elvis and my man from The Walking Dead and you cross them all over, you might get this character. So this is a nice cover. I, I like the cover and decided to pick that up too. Alright, so moving on to my back issue pickups. Um, my watching Comic Tom and Bryce Comics and Swaggle House. I'm not sure which one I saw this on. It's probably, I believe it might have been Swaggle House, uh, another vlogger that I, I watch you know I'm gonna shout out a couple of different vloggers that I, I actually watch on a regular basis other than myself you can get a lot of information from these guys they know a lot more than me I'm still like a neophyte within comic book vlogging but 
you know, vloggers, we watch other vloggers, so that's what helps us get better at our own particular vlog. Plus, it's like a community, so, you know, check them out. That's Comic Tom 101. Um, he is connected to the Key Collector app. I use that app continuously to keep me up on a Key Collector um, comic books that I want to collect. And like I said, I'm not sure if I heard it from him or um, a man Swaggle House or Bryce Comics is another one. I check out his blog a lot. So shout out to you guys. Keep doing what you do. And, you know, I'm jumping in, into the community. So, you know, send some love. Send, send some love your boy way. All right, so next, um, I picked up this from Emerald City Comics, and this is Luke Cage, Hero for Hire, number 14. And this is the first appearance of Big Ben Donovan. And lately, I've grown an affinity for uh, Luke Cage covers. And um, I'm finding that with the back issues, um, a lot of the older comic books, I'm really, really loving these particular covers that shows brothers and some cute sisters on the cover as well. You know, the brother saved this black superhero saving a sister. I really dig that. I love this cover. I'm really loving this cover. Uh, I showed you guys the first appearance of Black Mariah um, and the first appearance of Cottonmouth as well. So of Cottonmouth or Diamondback? I forget. I think it was Diamondback. I can't remember which one I have, but um, one of them I don't, one of them I do. But I showed you these covers. So my goal right now is to pick up the full run of Luke Cage, Hero for Hire, um, 1 through 17. After that, I think it turns into Power Man, but I want to get that 1 through 17 at least. But yeah, so I picked up two copies of this. Check out those covers. Pretty dope, pretty dope. And I picked up this copy of Wolverines. I forget exactly why, um, but check out another vlog later. This was in my pool box, so I know there was a reason why I put it in there. And then another uh, Miles Morales spider-man i picked up that as well so those are a couple of the things that i picked up and so this next uh this next back issues that i picked up i'm gonna uh, dedicate these to my uncle bernard because my uncle bernard is an avid lover of westerns he always loved them when i was growing up him and my grandfather would always watch them he would come home and if i was watching something on tv i'd be watching wrestling or you know my cartoons or whatever he'd come in and he'd be like dead don't you know Bonanza on or don't you know Gunsmoke on? Something like that. I'd be so pissed off because I knew the TV was about to get turned. And even when my grandfather was at home, if he came, my Uncle Bernard came home and there was something else on TV, he turned. And this is my uncle, so, you know, he bigger than me, older than me. He kicked my butt. So, anyway, I really, I think I didn't like Westerns because it was so many Westerns back then, but I didn't see any black people in them. So, I'm like, I don't really want to watch this but he loved them to death so i saw this movie that's coming out um it's called the heart of they fall and um it has regina king in it, it has uh idris elba um they got kang the conqueror mr john majors in it um so like i said i've grown this affinity for having a love with uh westerns and especially seeing black black people in these westerns um i used to love the movie posse i'm probably gonna watch that again because that's one of my favorite movies but you know, so all of that to say, my pickup this week was was definitely on that black cowboy western thing. I saw this comic book a while back. I couldn't find it. Hit up my man at uh, Emerald City Comics and picked up Reno Jones and Kid Cassidy and Gunhawks. So I saw one of these covers and I believe it is, I saw this particular cover. And as you see, this is just Reno Jones Gunhawk. And all right, so with this issue here, number seven, Reno Jones Gunhawk, um, Kid Cassidy ends up getting killed in uh, issue six. So this makes Reno Jones the second black character to have their own named comic book series. So this is uh, that first one for that. And then I have, I flipped it over, but I have also number one issue of the series. Um, I'm missing a couple out of the series. These books are in pretty good condition I am probably gonna look for an upgrade in this one this one is probably in uh, probably in like a five condition you know five five point five six somewhere like that if it was graded but I am gonna get a better copy but anyway I saw this particular cover and that's what attracted it to me I know that there is another um, black hero um, 
uh, Lobo that as far as mainstream doesn't get um, the notoriety that it should. I'm not sure how that plays because Luke Cage was uh, the first named uh, hero for their own comics, but I don't know how Lobo plays into that. So if you if you know that, if you know any of my guys from Blurred Core happen to be watching this video, hit me up in the comments. Let me know. Correct me um, because it does sound like there's a discrepancy somewhere. But anyway, um, I love this cover. This cover is super hella dope. So I grabbed this one. I'm probably going to get a shirt made with this particular cover. I'm going to holler at my girl CC um, in St. Pete. Uh, CC, uh, I think it's CC Ducks and Tees. I can't remember the exact name, but it'll be in the link below. So I'm going to send this over to her, see if I can get me a shirt made with it. Um, something like this. Something dope. But um, yeah, so that's my pickups. And like I say, I'm, I was super excited about getting these particular issues. Um, in my collection to have something a little bit different than your typical uh, superheroes Okay, so yeah, so I was super excited about getting these particular issues I'm glad that I have what I have in my collection. I did go by my uh, my little spot where I get my little dollar books They're actually two dollars instead of dollar comic book box But uh, for that I picked up some extra copies of Invincible Iron Man with Riri Williams on the cover and in my hunt to get infamous Iron Man number one, I got a couple of a uh, couple of those as well. But that's just you know the storyline where Doctor Doom actually becomes Iron Man. So I picked up some of those, some back some back issue goodness as the dude Tom, comic Tom says. And uh, but yeah, always Riri Williams forever. I'm gonna do a special on on, uh, on Riri Williams. I'm gonna do a segment on her. But um yeah. So yeah, so that's my pickups for the week. Um, let me go through real quick and let's see, you see my stack. And let's see what my top three covers for the week are gonna be. And I'm gonna isolate this to um, new comics because if I didn't, then it would either be this Reno Jones cover or this Luke Cage cover as my number one covers for the week. So we'll put those up there uh, let's see, I like this cover, mm. yeah, okay, so this is what we're gonna do, we're gonna, we're gonna have four, so three is gonna be this Scotty Young cover at number three, love that, that's super dope. And two is going to be this uh, Green Lantern with Green Lantern Joe Mullen on the cover with Teen Lantern by her side. And I said I wasn't going to do it because it's not really um, a new comic book. But I don't have like a whole bunch of comics that, uh, that I, I like their cover for this week. So number one is going to be a tie between this Luke Cage back issue, number 14, Hero for Hire, and this Reno Jones number seven. So these are my comic book covers for the week. So, yeah, that's how we doing it. Anyway, um, oh, I also picked up a new pop, Spike Lee. Shout out to Spike. Um, yeah, I just picked that up to add to the collection. But yeah, anyway, so that's my collection. That's my uh, pickups for this week. That's what was in my bag. As you see, I had a big bag this week. Shout out to my family. Shout out to my Uncle Bernard. What's up, Unc? Um, so yeah, so I appreciate you guys for joining me. As always, like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, do all the great things that's gonna make this channel great. Most definitely, above all things, continue to evolve and keep kicking it with me at Evolutionary Comics, baby. Holla at your boy. I'm out.